folks, Ryan here, and welcome back to The Reading Room, the case series where we discuss amazing radiographic cases from small animal practice to help you level up your radiology game. This week, we were asking, is this a patient that we should cut or not? Let's take a look together. So the images that we provided in the weekend rounds newsletter were the following. We have a ventrodorsal and a right lateral projection, and the question posed to the OB community was, should we be taking this patient straight to the OR or not? And as always, the weekend rounds readers did such an unbelievable job and absolutely crushed this case with 68% of folks saying, yes, I'm going to take this patient to surgery. And that is exactly the right answer. I think that if you said you want a little bit more information, that's not wrong in any way. Obviously, we only give you a small snippet of the case here. And even looking for additional imaging, as we'll talk about, could be the right answer in this case. So when we look at these radiographs, the things that are pointing me towards this being an intestinal obstruction and therefore needing to go to surgery are the size of the intestinal segments in the caudal abdomen. So when I look at the larger segment outlined with the red arrows here in the caudal abdomen compared to the really small segments in the craniodorsal abdomen, also with red, that shows me that those really large distended segments are a couple times the size of those smallest ones, which as we'll get into in a moment is one of the criteria for mechanical obstruction. The other thing that I'm noticing is in the mid abdomen, and I don't know if this is colonic or potentially small intestinal, there's this atypically shaped structure kind of oval, and it looks a little bit more formed than I might expect for fecal material or other normal material. And so this is definitely something that I'm worried about as a potential foreign body in this patient as a cause of obstruction. So from these radiographs alone, I think the size of the intestine tells me I'm willing to say that this patient has a mechanical obstruction and should go to surgery. But certainly, you know, we could be thinking about doing additional diagnostic tests like an abdominal ultrasound, looking for the cause of obstruction, and especially depending on, you know, the, the exact patient that we're talking about, as well as the client's needs, we might need to um, lower the risk of a negative explore by getting a absolute sure thing behind us in getting that abdominal ultrasound to tell us. But if we take a look at uh, some of the criteria for obstruction, the one that I really like to use is two populations of small intestine. And when we talk about this, what we're actually saying is the largest segment of small intestine compared to the smallest segment of small intestine is at least two times the size. So two times the size for the largest compared to the smallest, that's going to be um, an indication for mechanical obstruction. But there are other published um, criteria for obstruction. And this is from the textbook of diagnostic radiology, the Thrall textbook, where we look at it in both dogs and cats. In dogs, it should be less than two times the width of a rib, the intestinal diameter. Uh, and then when we look at the intestinal diameter compared to the height of L5 at the narrowest point, that should be less than 1.6 times in a normal patient. In cats, intestines should be less than 12 millimeters. And then the ratio of small bowel compared to the end plate of L2 should be less than two times. So if we take a look at that in, in these instances, what we can see is that we do have uh, those large intestinal segments you know, they're a number of times the width of the rib. And, um, you know, we put it up against probably not quite the narrowest point in that L5 vertebra uh, closer to the end plate, but either way, it's sitting over 1.6 times and therefore would be an indication for mechanical obstruction. So the size of the intestinal segments in this patient really consistent with mechanical obstruction. And again, then surgery would be an appropriate next step. If we wanted to do something more and do an abdominal ultrasound, I think that's very perfectly fair in this patient, uh, but we wouldn't just want to be calling this a normal abdomen or anything like that and not be worried about taking the patient to surgery. So I hope this was helpful and helps in evaluating the next patient coming in with potential obstruction. Продолжение